Ahoy hoy, and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we are going to talk about how you're wrong about SCP-999. Let's get started. Also, I got a new chair. So anyway, SCP-999 is, <laughs> we'll actually read from the article itself here so we can explain exactly what this SCP is at first. Uh, SCP-999 appears to be a large, amorphous, gelatinous mass of translucent orange slime weighing about 54 kilograms, or 120 pounds, with a consistency similar to that of peanut butter. Subject's size and shape is easily malleable and can change shape at will, though when at rest, SCP-999 becomes a rounded oblate dome roughly 2 meters wide and 1 meter in height. Um, there's some more, it's just basic uh, physical descriptions here. But I do find it interesting that something that is two meters wide and a meter tall, <laughs> a blob, uh, by the way, uh, only weighs 120 pounds. <laughs> That's an interesting number. <laughs> um, so in the grand scheme of things, beyond its physical description, what is SCP-999? Well, think back to your average Series 1 SCP. The 682, the, there's a variety of them, Able, Plague Doctor, these monstrous, dangerous entities that can kill you with a touch, or they're indestructible, or they're, they go into rage states and they try and kill everyone. And then you have 999. 999 acts more like uh, a friendly dog, or perhaps a child. Uh... It just wants to be friends. Its primary method of attack is uh, to tickle you to death. And not really to death, actually. If they if it hurts you in any way, even accidentally, it will retreat into the corner and whimper about it. <laughs> but beyond this, of course, as described, and if you've seen uh, fan art images of it, which I'll probably put some on the screen right now, um, if you've seen fan art images of it, you'll see that it's a cute thing. It's nice. It's a breath of fresh air in the SCP world, which is something the SCP world really needs. Uh, any, I, I've been playing a lot of Cyberpunk 2077 lately, and <laughs> it just there's no brightness at all. It's oppressively dark all the time, and the SCP Foundation could easily fall into that sort of trap where it's like, let's just be dark. Darkness is cool, but without anything to raise it up above after a certain amount of time, you just, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's not you get bored with it. You just kind of get kind of get beaten down by the content you're absorbing and you just kind of slowly back away from it. Um, you need some sort of an emotional change, like every once in a while, at the very least, something to bring you up. And SCP-999, among other articles, uh, manages to do that. And from a meta perspective, an out of universe perspective, SCP-999 provides something of a, like a juxtaposition to all of the deadly SCPs. I'm sure the author was just thinking when they wrote it, hey, let's write, like, <laughs> so when the SCP Foundation starts, you've got all these deadly SCPs, and they're new, and they're interesting, and they're kind of, uh, kind of different. It's not, it's not the norm. Not everything is supposed to be deadly and all this other stuff. But then the SCP Foundation becomes that. So now subverting the norm is creating a friendly creature, right? And so it acts in that capacity to be not just a palate cleanser for the darkness of the SCP Wiki, but also to, as I said, juxtapose against the, uh, the normal content you might encounter. However, if that was all there was... I don't think there would be anything to be wrong about. I mean, there's always going to be things to be wrong about because people always get things wrong. But the problem I have is that SCP-999 is used in um, in a way, or I should say interpreted by a lot of people to be inexorably tied to the Scarlet King uh, and the children of the Scarlet King and that whole canonical end of the world scenario, especially 231. Um, and the reasons for that, essentially, 
uh, source from there's a variety of articles about it, but new job is probably uh, at the core for most of these problems. So new job is something that was and, and by the way, SCP-999, let's just get the author out of the way real quick, uh, was posted to the wiki on the 2nd of February 2009 by Professor Snyder. It's P-R-O-F Snyder. Uh, I'll put the actual name up on the screen right here. Uh, I want to make sure that I credit the authors of these individual pieces properly. Um, but on the 7th of June in 2016, Dr. Chandra uh, posted New Job. And New Job um, approaches SCP-999 from a different perspective. It says that it's part of the world ending, d destroying all these other things. It's part of that, actually. It's an in important part of trying to keep it from destroying the world. The idea is, and this, it's funny, so New Job references two articles, not just SCP-999, but an article called Dust and Blood, which was written by Jorick uh, on the 2nd of January 2014, which we're going to go into that now first, so we can get back to New Job in a second. But Dust and Blood is, again, purports to be a, not a Sarkic text, I'm thinking of something else, a Davite text, it's a Davite text. Um, describing the Scarlet King and his seven brides, uh, which are also technically his children. Um, there's a lot in, I hope, I don't suggest you, SCP-999 is fine, but New Job and Dust and Blood, they have a lot of very triggering stuff in them, let's put it that way, and if that's the kind of thing that could potentially bother you, I would suggest you avoid it, and honest to God, it's not even necessary stuff, but regardless. Um, Dust and Blood purports to say that the seventh bride, the one that, 231, the one that's actually in containment by the SCP Foundation of 110 Montauk fame, um, is actually secretly fighting against the Scarlet King, and her child is meant to be a kind of warrior against the Scarlet King. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that, and we'll talk about how this doesn't actually work together as well as most people think it does in a second. New Job is about a fellow called Dr. Collingwood who gets appointed to be SCP-999's head researcher. And because SCP-999 is this, you know, gelatinous blob, friendly gelatinous blob, there's an oddity to it because he's appointed by the O5 Council and he gets a direct message from O5 Command to talk about his appointment, which is not normal for a project of what you would imagine to be so little importance. But the idea is that SCP-999 is a weapon against the Scarlet King. And the children of the Scarlet King, uh, who were keeping SCP-231 in containment before the Foundation got a hold of uh, her, and who were su supposedly uh, doing uh, 110 Montauk to keep her in containment, which doesn't make sense, by the way. We're, we're not going to go too much into 231 here, uh, mainly for, for a lot of reasons. We'll just say that. <laughs> but... It doesn't actually make much logical sense that someone who wants the Scarlet King to be brought forth would have on file a way to keep the Seventh Bride from having a child if the Bride having her child is supposed to be the end of the world. Uh, and so it's the idea is that maybe that was set in place to trick the Foundation into helping contain uh, this creature that could actually fight the Scarlet King. And... What they did was, they realized this, they let her have her child, and SCP-999 is what resulted. A being which is friendly, is capable of curing uh, depression and PTSD uh, just by touch, and who, 682 by the way, is considered to be one of the children of the Scarlet King in this version, this canon we'll say, um, was actually able to turn him into a friendly, uh, a friendly animal as well, just by being in contact with him. But there's a lot of problems with this. And first of all, we're going to say 
there is no canon. So if anyone ever tells you that this is absolutely true, that 999 is one of the children of the Scarlet King because they read it once, uh, remember that nothing on the SCP wiki is necessarily canon to anything else. So if you believe New Job, great for you, that's true. But if you just read the SCP-999 article, nothing in it would indicate that this is true. <laughs> so let's just keep that in mind. But secondly, more importantly, a lot of this sources out of dust and blood, specifically a paragraph. And again, I, I think I credit this properly. Jorik, 2nd of January, 2014, wrote, uh, the seventh bride was Ahabat. She was the smallest and the weakest of the seven, but she was not but she was not broken utterly by the king and was horrified by her state. Her children walked on two legs and were mighty hunters and heroes. She taught them in secret, hoping that they might destroy the children of her sisters and overthrow the king. They are few and they have failed. Two things. First of all, uh, this is this feels very much like it's supposed to be a humanity saves the world sort of thing. Like they walk on two legs. That's generally humans. But even if it's not, it's talking about heroes, human heroes, specifically. SCP-999 is a blob. It does not walk on two legs, uh, which, if you believe this, sort of wrecks the whole of the... Th you have to do a lot of contortions to be like... Well, maybe when it grows up, it will have two legs. Maybe it's a child now. It's only 10 years old. And in fact, uh, New Job mentions it's only 10 years old. This is a child. Maybe when it grows up, it'll be like a human and it'll have two legs. But that's a serious contortion to try and make this work for you. In reality, it just doesn't. Unless you want it to. Because again, there is no canon. The version of Dust and Blood from New Job that it's referencing back to Maybe it doesn't include that, or maybe it's very specific about what it is. The point is, uh, I've seen this thrown around too much, that SCP-999 and all this stuff is is necessarily true. That it that it is one of the children of the Scarlet King, and it's meant to save the world from the Scarlet King. No, it's not. SCP-999 is just a fun little uh, palate cleanser from Series uh, 1, which of which there are stories written where that is true. And if you want to treat that as a particular canon of its own, that's great. Anyway, I think I've gone on long enough about why there is no canon. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button. And I, I really, really, really would appreciate if you hit the subscribe button. That's super important. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Sinjariki, who both pledge at $100. And I would appreciate it because this is important. Um, I'm, I'm not getting a lot of traffic to my channel lately, and I think part of that might not might necessarily be a lack of engagement. So leave a comment respond to something I said in the video that you find particularly objectionable. Hit the like button if you liked it. Or the alternative, if you didn't. Let me know that I'm not alone out here. And I will see you all again on Tuesday.